who is the biggest, the Eagles' biggest threat? The answer to that is always the Eagles, not the Cowboys. Excited to talk about retired life, man. How's it been for you? What's been the most exciting part? Maybe something that surprised you a little bit about it? Well, it's exciting. The whole thing's exciting because I've never done it before. So it's 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 new territory. So every single week there's something new happening. Um and I think it's it's been good in some ways. Obviously I miss being around the guys in the locker room and, and parts of football, no question about it. Uh but I'm really fortunate. There's a lot of opportunities uh between my brother and I's podcasts and things outside of that that have really uh, taking on a life of their own. You know, I'm going to be on Monday night football, commentating on games for the first time this year. So getting ready for that. Uh, you know, my, my friends and I are doing another Christmas album. So getting ready for that. So it's, it, it's been a lot, even though I'm supposed to be retired and less busy, I feel like I'm more busy, but we'll see how that transpires during the season. Yeah. I was about to say, you are a guy that seems very busy. Got a lot of things going on. Um, I don't know if you've seen the the Tom Bur- Tom Brady. I feel like is always on the verge of unretiring and and then staying retired. But um, is there any scenario? And I'm sure you've been asked this too, where you could see yourself suiting back up. Like, what would force your hand and being like, okay, maybe I'll maybe I'll do it. <laughs> I don't think uh, it's an option. Yeah, I mean, I, listen, I would love to play football in some regards, but with where my body is and just, I just don't think I can do it at the level that I appreciate or enjoy so for me that that chapter is firmly closed and uh, i look forward to uh taking on the next one i mean I, and nobody's gonna want me back i'm already down to 275 once i get down to 260 um, i promise you nobody wants a 260 pound center playing in the nfl so it's all right though i had fun while it lasted and um i think uh i think this next chapter is going to be different obviously but still just as fun like you mentioned, you're prepping for your new gig as an analyst for ESPN, which is freaking amazing, man. Um, yeah. Could you kind of talk about what's been going or what's gone into that and what you think your strengths will be when it does come to analyzing the game of football? I don't know. I think I, what goes into it is you just, you, I think you really have to go uh, make a concerted effort now to stay involved with, with what's happening. You know, obviously when you're in it, you're around it on a daily basis. And now that you're more detached from it, uh, the game evolves so fast. There's new players every year. Uh, players change every year. Teams change. Coaches change. Philosophies change. So the, you have to make a concerted effort to really follow what's happening, especially now for me. What's new is doing that on a league-wide scale. Um, you know, I think it's 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 more focused on everything, which has been fun to now experience that as a fan for the first time. You know, I get to really take in the whole NFL, which is unique. Uh, from what I have been doing, which has really been focusing on Eagles and the NFC East and the NFC in general. So um, I got to do that. And I think what will be my strong suit is, I mean, hopefully that I'm passionate and that I love the game of football. I think I think sometimes people overcomplicate commentating and, uh, you know, especially the pregame shows. Um, I'm going to try and give really pointed, good uh, takes that educate and the viewers can take and appreciate. But I think at the end of the day, people want to have fun. That's what they're there to tune into. They're they're there to watch a game and a bunch of guys enjoy doing something uh, that they all love. And I think uh, as a commentator, if you love the game and that comes across uh, nine times out of 10, I'm having fun with them. Right. Yeah. Speaking of fun, do you think they're going to let you do any broadcast shirtless? <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, Sometimes you, it's better to uh, seek forgiveness than ask permission, if you don't want to be. There so, you go, man. I got to talk about the Eagles, of course. First and foremost, sure. got to go back to the tush push. I know it became just this iconic play, something you and Jalen really perfected. Do you think the Eagles yeah. are going to kind of shy away from it now that you're not lining up at center, or do you think we're going to see plenty of those? I, I think they'd be stupid not to do it if it keeps working. So I don't, I, I think it just comes down to, is it still going to work? And I think it's still going to work. Um, you know, I think I probably get way too much credit for that play's success, that play, as long as everybody runs it right and plays it with good leverage. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's something that is just incredibly hard to stop for a yard in the NFL or less. So I don't think we're going to see any of that slowing down. Uh, unless it isn't working for whatever reason, and then they would probably audible to something that does work. But 
I think it's still going to work at a very, very high rate. Uh, there's a bunch of offensive linemen that are still there that know how to run it right. And um, Jeff Stalin's a tremendous coach. So I, I would be very, very surprised if that is not still a prominent uh, piece of the Eagles offense. Right. Take me inside the Eagles locker room going into this year. I know there was a recent ESPN article written that suggested there may be some like division towards Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni, but I know a lot of that too is is very much, uh, it doesn't come from the guys themselves. So is there any yeah. truth to that or is it just the media, of course, like always kind of trying to stir the pot? No, I think, I think, listen, the reality is whenever you lose a lot of games, it causes frustration and guys want to win so bad in this league. And uh, there's no doubt that at times it makes people frustrated and, um, you know, it's, that's why losing and uh, it, it, it's hard on teams. But I think at the end of the day, uh, all these guys still love each other. Uh, all these guys respect one another. And uh, you go out, you win a couple games early on. Uh, everybody's loving each other once again. You know, nobody had a problem with anybody in that locker room when we went to the Super Bowl the year before. So this is just a lot of the times the circumstances of winning and losing football games. And um, I don't think of it any more long than, uh, than, than on those terms. And uh, I think that all of those guys uh, have the respect and love for one another that uh, they know that that's at the end of the day, it's all about winning football games. And um, I think once they do, it's going to, it's going to take off. Right. Saquon Barkley made the trip down the turnpike to join the Eagles. What do you think he brings to the squad? He's a tremendous player. He's a talented guy. He can hurt the defense in multiple ways. Between not, not he can do any run play in the book. He can do he can protect. He can he can go out wide. I mean he's 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 a one of the I mean not one of the few, but he's a, he's a complete running back who also happens to be an explosive dynamic player, and that's rare. And um, I think that for us, the Eagles have a great offensive line. They have a great quarterback and they have great receivers. So now there's so many facets that they can attack a defense with. And uh, having a tool like Saquon uh, just brings apart another thing that they have to be worried about. Who would you say is the biggest threat to the Eagles this year? Because I feel like there's plenty of drama always in Cowboys yeah. world, but we've really come to expect this year, you know, year in and year out. So now that you're an analyst, can you forecast the Cowboy season for me? If you think that they're going to be uh, one of the biggest threats, do you see any contract dramas playing out? Well, I'll answer it in two ways. First of all, who is the biggest, the Eagles' biggest threat? The answer to that is always the Eagles, not the Cowboys. The biggest threat to the Eagles is always themselves. Um, it's all about how you practice each and every day, how you prepare, and how you go about your business throughout the course of the season that's going to dictate your record, not any other team. And as an analyst, how do I think the Cowboys are going to do? Um, I don't know. I think they they finished last season really well outside of the playoff game. They they had a really good team. Uh, they've, they've lost some pieces. They've added some. So, you know, I don't know yet, but I would imagine they're going to be pretty good. Um, but I think, uh, you know, time will tell. You know, there's still injuries. A lot of things can happen between now and in the playoffs, which is really, I think, what both of these teams are are concerned with is winning the NFC East and and having a good position uh, come the postseason. I think if it's if it's not that for both of these teams, it's probably more significant than the poorer season than they anticipated. Hey, sports fans, if you want to see more conversations with athletes and stars, check out these videos right here and be sure to subscribe for more from USA Today Sports.